Jake Hewitt from Studio West, joined by Jake Sherman, Editor-in-Chief, Punchbowl News. Go to punchbowlnews.com. Good morning, Jake. I love seeing you on Skype in the morning. <laughs> well, Hugh, I, as I told Dwayne beforehand, if we're going to do this on Skype, I'm going to be in my exercise clothes. So I don't know what no, to tell you. That, that is, is fine is. by me. It is what it is. And I want you to keep working out because if you don't, uh, Punchbowl News will go away sooner rather than later. Stay in good shape. Uh, at the very end of this morning's Punchbowl News, you noted that Benjamin Sass has resigned from the Senate. You didn't speculate. I am assuming former Governor Pete Ricketts, who ran for the Senate in 2006, will be appointed by the new Nebraska governor. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think he's basically said as much as that he's seeking the seat. Um, and um, I think that uh, I think that he is likely to get it. And, he, and I think he'll be welcomed by by um, uh, everybody, by Mitch McConnell and the entire Senate. Yeah. Now, I have a grudge against him because he's part owner of the Cubs and they beat my Cleveland, then Cleveland Indians in 2016 in seven games. But other than that, well, he'll be a good addition to the Senate. Ben Sass going to Florida. Let's talk about the House Rules Package. Kevin McCarthy, whose career began in 1997 as an aide to Bill Thomas as the Speaker of the House. He has to pass the rules today. You note in Punchbowl News, there are two no votes. They can afford four no votes. Do you expect the rules to pass? I do. Uh, I think that they have Tony Gonzalez and Nancy Mace are problematic for them. Uh, I think that if um, they could limit their defections to those two, they'll obviously pass it. They seemed confident last night based on my conversations with the leadership that they could get Nancy Mace, who is mostly angry, and I think rightfully so, to be honest with you, that a lot of deals were cut in secret. A lot of people are going to want to know what Kevin McCarthy promised to you, and I don't think that's crazy. I think that's, that's, that is a um, uh, normal course of events to know what rules you, your leadership is going to be living by. Uh, let's take the bear case of the scenario. If they're not able to pass the rules, then uh, that's a huge problem for McCarthy, and it's it's probably not even worth the – the um, uh, the deals that he cut to become speaker, but I do think they're going to be able to pass it. I think it's they're expecting full attendance. They don't know what the Democrat if the Democrats are at full attendance, they'll see around six thirty this evening, and I think that that's going to be a big moment for McCarthy and especially for Tom Emmer, to be honest with you, the whip, who's never been a whip before, and I think he's somebody that is uh, uh, untested. Excuse me, untested, and uh, is going to face a big uh, big challenge here and in many other places. You. Now, you know, I, I've known Kevin since 1989, and the speaker is a wonderful guy. He's very affable. He doesn't have a long list. He's not a retribution guy. He's not going to be looking to off the six people who didn't vote for him in the end. I do think he'll live up to the commitments he made. I'm just curious about who the three Freedom Caucus members will be on rules. Rules is not fun. David Dreyer was a weekly guest on this show for 15 years. It's not a fun committee. Who wants that committee? Chip Roy said yesterday on the air he doesn't want that committee. I think he'll take it, to be honest with you. Basically, it's three Freedom Caucus people and one adjacent, one other conservative who is going to uh, be on the panel. Now, I, I, I think that they're going to have to dig deep. I think this is, I mean, remember, Hugh, you know this, but perhaps some listeners don't. You have to, usually the House comes in at 6.30 on a Friday, on a Monday afternoon, uh, on a Monday evening. You have to get here much earlier because rules can meet at two o'clock or three o'clock. So it really cuts your weekend uh, in not in half, but by by, you know, a half a day, which is not preferable for some people. Oh, California uh, members hate it unless you're David Dreyer. I mean, because yeah, he, I, it, it's a full day. You have to leave on Saturday, basically. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's a pain in the neck. And um, I but I think, listen, I think that. In its original construct, too, the House Freedom Caucus was a rules-based committee, a committee that was uh, interested in reforming the rules. It wasn't a conservative Donald Trump drum-beating scenario. It was some uh, a group that cared about adherence to the House rules. Now, uh, all that said, <coughs> excuse me. All that said, um, I think you're going to find. I think he's going to find people to be on rules, and they're going to have to be. And basically, that what he, what they have said to me is that you have to have your fights in the rules committee, but when the rule comes to the floor, you better vote for it. So it's a little bit of a burden for these folks as well. Now, my last question, Jake, has to do with yeah. the setup. The debt limit comes up when? When is the, what Democrats say is the debt limit deadline? It's not really the debt limit deadline, but what are they saying it is? They say it's sometime in the spring or the summer um, or the fall. <laughs> I mean, it's- Yeah, so yeah there you go. It all depends on tax receipts and uh, quarterly tax receipts, monthly tax receipts, corporate tax receipts. It, it depends on the economy in a large sense, um, but it's always more of an art than a science. I assume it's in the second half of 2023. 
Um, and I had a, an advisor, or a, uh, let's call it a friend to Kevin McCarthy, say yesterday, he better start thinking about it and negotiating on it now. Um, well, that, that's what I wanted I to get to. The, they got a yeah, message now. Minister, yeah. They, they, the they got to get everyone. Gonna be very, they're going to be very, um, the Biden administration is going to be very wary of any negotiation on the debt limit. Um, so this is going to be a knockdown, drag out fight in 2023. Remember, Joe Biden went through this with Barack Obama uh, back in 20, in uh, whatever year that was, 2013, 2014, whenever that was. Uh, and um, the years escaped me at this point. But uh, and he, he has the scars to prove it. And I was around for those days. It was not fun. Um, so, well, you know, if that's big... interesting. It's not combat. It's a threat. It's a lot of media getting very excited. What it is is no, that it's, you it, can't. It's, it's pretty. It's combat. I mean, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be really. It's going to be really messy. And um, remember, there are probably sixty votes in the Senate for a clean debt se- debt ceiling increase. Remember that. I mean, it, that's the thing. But doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if 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 the default happens. Here's it will it be because. You. Here's how it gets resolved. A Democrat does a discharge petition for a clean debt ceiling. 212 votes. They need about six other votes, uh, House Republicans, to get it through, to get it to the floor. It, then the House can pass a clean debt limit and send it over to the Senate. And, and I know that's how it could also get resolved by the House agreeing on what the Republicans, House, on what they must have. And this is where the problem has been in the past. They have not made a clean demand on the debt limit. If they get together and begin to message now, I'm just curious if you think they have the capacity to do this, on what their demands are, not just for the debt limit, but for the fall when the new budget is necessary. If they telegraph now, we must have A, and they don't get A, and the default approaches, I don't think the burden will be on them, it will be on the Democrats. Can they articulate A? That's a fair fair thing to say. I think in addition, um, on top of that, there is a... um, there is a uh, the administration might be incentivized to cut a deal in the sense that Biden's going to be up for re-election or, uh, you know, the presidential is coming and he might see it in his interest. I don't know yet. It's too early. These things tend to resolve themselves very close to deadlines, as you know. And, and that's why the deadline matters so much and why I, I heard Chip Roy at one point it was one of the 14, not one of the six, say, We need to be very rigorous in demanding the Treasury articulate why it is falling apart and why it isn't falling apart in managing tax receipts. You put your finger on it at the beginning, Jay. The debt limit is so that cash flow does not exceed available borrowing. That's all it is. It's what every household in America does. But the Republicans will raise it if they get something. But if they can't agree on what they want, the political onus will fall on them. But if they do and it's reasonable, the political onus will fall on the Democrats. Do you agree with that you assessment? Could see that ha- you could. Well, I, I think that's a fair. That's a fair a read right now. It depends how much happens between now and then. Um, it, de- it it depends on a lot. And I think that uh, as we get closer to the, I mean, if they pass some sort of some sort of debt limit that that cuts spending by a trillion dollars or by something that the Biden administration can't swallow and that the Senate couldn't pass, no, the onus remains on House Republicans. If it's a reasonable thing that could potentially pass the Senate, I hear you, and I think that's a, a fair way to look at it. And and to me, everything is going to be backdropped by the 2023 presidential debates, which will begin right. probably in July or August. So the party has got to position their nominee to win in 24, so they can't scattershot, they can't let crazy people put up crazy stuff on the defense spending. This is where the real divide in the caucus is. This is the deepest Mm -hmm. divide in the caucus. I talked to members of armed services over the weekend. They will not cut defense spending because we are in a dire position. When Jim Jordan told you, or you quoted him in Punchbowl News this morning, that it's on the table, what's that mean? The Ukraine aid or general levels? They say they want to freeze defense spending at 2022 levels. That is a that is what they want. That's what Kevin McCarthy has agreed to with the freedom with the conservatives. Um, a lot of this is just nonsense, Hugh, because the Senate's not going to do a lot of it. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of just it's a lot of promises without any sort of backup. So I do think that it's a um, I do think it's going to be a major point of tension. It already is not only with Hask, the House Armed Services Committee, but also appropriators appropriators who want to spend money, who want to keep a strong defense. Uh, and many of those folks are conservative, some of the most conservative people in the conference, you know, like people like Mike, like Mike Rogers of Alabama. So I think this is a 
I think this is going to be an absolute tension point come uh, come later this I week. agree. And the best way to avoid that is to get the uh, NDAA done and the appropriation sent over to the Senate early. Jake Sherman, Punchbowl News, more invaluable than it has ever been. Go to Punchbowl News. You look good in the morning and you're actually, go back and do it. <laughs> give us another 20, Jake.